also in baseball, you always lead off with your strongest batter. And our strongest batter is Lee Hui Tsai, the director of the Peak Hour Institute for Learning and Memory and the Aging Brain Initiative at MIT. Um, this is a name you should memorize. And fortunately, her research may allow you to remember her name for 23 <laughs> years longer because she does cutting edge research on Alzheimer's disease and shedding, literally with light, some of the plaque in your brain in a way of inducing gamma ray oscillations to protect your brains. So please welcome Li Hui Sai. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is really a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, so this morning, as Huang told you, I plan to tell you about a, a very safe and completely non-invasive uh, brain stimulation approach that we are taking to tackle Alzheimer's disease. Um, and we are calling it the power of gamma. So um, as the society is aging, um, age-related diseases have risen sharply. And the increases in the incidence of dementia are particularly alarming. Today, um, almost one in two adults over the age of 85 are living with Alzheimer's disease. And unfortunately, the option for treatment um, are extremely limited. Um, and in the last 15 years, there has not been a single clinical trial succeeded and not a single new drug approved. So the question is, why is coming up with a more effective and new treatment for Alzheimer's so difficult? So let's take a closer look at what we know. So we know that the disease takes at least two decades to develop, and it has characteristic pathological features. These include um, amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tau tangles. Also, there is tremendous loss of nerve cells as well as synapses, and this leads to loss of brain volume. There are also numerous other cellular and subcellular events that happen during the disease. Many different brain cell types are involved, and also, today, we have at least 30 genes in the human genome that are shown to significantly affect the risk for developing Alzheimer's. So suffice to say that the disease is extremely complex. So in fact, it is not surprising that by simply targeting a single molecule or a gene can have this substantial and systemic effect to reverse Alzheimer's. So what I'd like to offer you um, today is a new hypothesis for Alzheimer's disease um, and for the disease progression. Um, I would like to convince you that the breakdown of a particular neural network activity, especially the 40 hertz gamma rhythm, and its co-activation or synchronization across many different brain regions undermine the brain's response. Therefore, I would like to propose that strengthening this 40 hertz gamma rhythm can protect the brain from Alzheimer's neurodegeneration. So first you ask me, what is brain rhythm? So we know that our nerve cells are electrically coupled into brain circuits and large-scale networks through synapses. And brain rhythm is produced by synchronous firing of these um, connecting nerve cells in the network. And they can be detected as brain waves um, when large enough number of nerve cells are involved. And brain rhythm is thought to be important for coordinating communication among these nerve cells in many different brain regions binding them together to perform a particular function. Like a conductor, in keeping an orchestra in time to produce beautiful music. But as you can imagine, if this process is disrupted, then we end up with a very muffled music 
loses its harmony. Okay. So in our brain, there are many different classes of rhythms that have been detected. And gamma rhythms, ranging between 30 to 100 um, frequency band, are known to be particularly enhanced when subjects are involved in higher order um, cognitive tasks, such as working memory, sensory processing, spatial navigation. And um, the rhythms are even speculated to be important for consciousness. And in our work, we found that in the mouse model of Alzheimer's disease, very early on in the course of the disease, before any cognitive symptoms can be detected, gamma rhythm is already impaired. So we speculated that this compromised gamma rhythm plays a role in the development of the disease. Therefore, we um, decided to bring gamma back to the brain and see what happens. So how did we do that? Through collaboration with um, Ed Boyden, as well as Emery Brown uh, and their teams, we eventually came up with a very non-invasive brain stimulation approach. Um, we use a very simple computer code to drive LED light to flicker at different frequencies. And when we place the mouse in um, an environment with the light flicker um, go on at 40 hertz, we um, were able to see that the gamma power, the power of gamma rhythms in the part of the brain known as the visual cortex is significantly increased. And so we realized that it is possible to train the nerve cells in the brain to produce rhythms. So we call this approach gamma entrainment using sensory stimuli or genus. Recently, we found that it is also possible to produce gamma rhythms using 40 hertz click sound. And we can detect a sharp increase in the power of gamma in the auditory cortex. So what's the consequence of this increased gamma rhythm? It was really very unexpected. We found a profound reduction of Alzheimer's pathological features. So we developed a chronic protocol to expose the mice to um, this gamma light or sound one hour per day for several weeks. And what we found on the upper panels here uh, represent amyloid plaques in the brain of these animals. And you can see that after several weeks of exposure, the number and size of the plaques is significantly reduced. The bottom panels here showing um, a mouse model engineer to express this other pathological feature, tau neurofibrillary tangles. And this effect is just remarkable. After several weeks, we saw that the tangles largely vanished. Okay. So these are indeed very remarkable effects. And the question becomes, you know, how does gamma rhythm or increased gamma rhythm cause such a dramatic effect in reducing pathology? So we are um, actively pursuing the mechanisms, but I can tell you what we know so far. First of all, we realized that the increased gamma rhythm have a very significant impact on uh, the brain's immune cells, known as microglia. They normally are responsible to remove um, amyloid, but in Alzheimer's disease, this microglia become um, um, impaired, compromised, and they no longer do their normal job. But after the exposure to genus, um, this microglia, you can see in your own eyes, completely transformed. Um, they become larger, and more importantly, they become more active in taking up this amyloid, which you can see um, is the, the yellow kind of materials inside the cell of this microglia, and they are going to be degraded. We recently further found that the blood vessels, there are many of them in the brain, also respond to this treatment. You can see the lumen of the blood vessel becomes larger. And we speculate that this also facilitates to clear the amyloid from the brain's parenchyma into the circulation for degradation. And also one question is whether this effect stays in the sensory part of the brain, such as the visual cortex and auditory cortex. What we found is that with chronic exposure, these beneficial gamma effects actually propagate. 
throughout the entire brain, including the hippocampus and the prefrontal cortex, known to be important for memory function. So what about cognitive function? We found that the mice with impaired um, uh, 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 learning and memory, um, they can learn again following chronic exposure. They can uh, recognize an object in the environment better, they can remember a place better, and they can navigate better. And most importantly, even after exposure for several months, we have not seen any adverse effects develop by the treating mice. So right now, we are extremely excited about the effects of this treatment, and we are actively trying to translate this to human subjects. And we came up with a device um, that can deliver light and sound to um, human subjects. And here, we are using EEG to measure the response of the human brain. And I'm very happy to tell you that it turned out it seems humans respond to this exposure even better than mice. So here you can see we are looking at the gamma power, and this is the uh, heat map. You can see that with a light exposure, you can see many parts of the brain show increased gamma power. Um, in the young group, an older group also responded, also, also to a lesser extent. But most powerfully, you can see with light and sound together, the brain just responds so robustly. Um, overwhelming amount of um, gamma power also in the old uh, subjects. So um, right now, we are in a position to recruit um, Alzheimer's subjects and evaluate the consequence. So I just want to tell you that this afternoon, Alexandra um, Ringer um, will give you another experience of uh, gamma simulation that she called Gamma Moon, which gives you a very immersive kind of experience. So I would like to thank uh, all the people who have done the work to make it possible and all of my collaborators. And thank you very much for your attention.